so far in the course, we've been talking about uh, essentially the way that the mind doesn't work. So it doesn't work like a video camera. You can't um, go back in time and, re and review uh, what it is that you experienced again. Um, we don't have any sort of privileged access into the workings of our own memory. Um, and we're not very good at predicting other people's behavior under most circumstances. So we're not great at doing this sort of thing. That's right, and I think we could spend episode after episode just going through each of these myths and trying to shatter them. I mean, some common examples are uh, we only use 10% of our brains, or uh, right brain people are more creative than left brain people, or you can tell whether someone's lying from a, a polygraph test. Uh, we dealt with subliminal messages in rock music uh, a couple of weeks ago. The, th the thing is, there's, there's very little uh, empirical evidence for these claims. It, it seems that they, they just they don't do what we think they might. But as well as sort of shattering these myths, I think it's important that we, we replace uh, our beliefs with something. So one of the things we're trying to do in this course is give a realistic idea about how the mind is actually working. So we can take that uh, and use it to improve our everyday thinking. I think you're exactly right, but we also need to, in order to understand the way that the mind is working and give people a realistic sort of idea about uh, the kind of processes and so on that, that happen, we need to understand the environment that we're operating in. So specifically, um, when we're making everyday sort of sorts of decisions, well, what sorts of decisions do we make every day? Um, what to wear or... Um, whether to buy a lawnmower or not, or what kind of brand that you should buy, what, whether to buy a latex mattress or a box spring mattress, or um, whether to stay in the same job that you have, choosing a mate, um, uh, you know, going to a grocery store, what sort of things that you purchase at a grocery store, and so on, whether to spank your child, whether to be a vegetarian or not, um, you know, the list goes on. But these are the sorts of things that we're dealing with. But if that's the case, most of these decisions that we make aren't under ideal conditions. Most of the time we're kind of rushed in order to make them. And, you know, ideally, in the, in the best case scenario, you'd have, you know, all the time in the world, you'd have a big desk completely empty with, you know, paper. You could have a, a pros and cons list and you can weigh up, you know, whether to spank your child or not. Um, and you can kind of do some research, right? You'd have all of the information available to you about kind of the latest studies, for example, about, about spanking and the benefits. And, and we just don't have that time, right? Recently, I, I mentioned a latex mattress. Recently, we were going to buy a mattress, right? So this is, it's kind of a big purchase, right? That depending on the, it can go as high as tens of thousands of dollars and as low as, you know, sleeping on the floor, right? But I couldn't find any sort of really good evidence for, you know, sleeping in a latex mattress versus a box tr box spring mattress, though, you know, if you go into the sleep store, they would absolutely say that there's a massive difference between them and try to upsell you. But, you know, I don't have all day to sit and do the necessary research to be able to make these sort of decisions. The thing that gets me, though, is that even if you do have the time to, to be really deliberate uh, and think about this decision, like you said, after you've made the decision, it's really hard to get good feedback about the quality of that decision. So whether you decided to, to go to the movies instead of going to dinner, whether you decided to, to, to become a vegetarian, um, how can you possibly, sort of with a sample size of one, evaluate uh, the quality of that decision? How do you know you were right? Yeah, especially in hindsight as well. I mean, anything could happen. So the other thing is, though, even if somebody does have like, the right answer, if somebody knows whether it was the right decision or not, people aren't going to tell you because we have these strange sort of social ideas that you shouldn't critique people uh, you know, too much. So feedback is terrible. The feedback that we get from the world about the basis of our decisions, the feedback that we get from our, our friends and family and, and society is terrible as well. So the world is extremely complex and extremely ambiguous. Right? So most of the decisions that we're making aren't immediately apparent. So when we're talking about kind of complexity and amb ambiguity, I mean, we kind of gave a few toy examples in the beginning in episode two. Where we were talking about different illusions and how you see them differently. Most of these examples, there's kind of two ways of seeing it, maybe. I mean, if, uh, but when we're talking in kind of realistic terms, if you t talk about something like, I don't know, uh, talent, right? When you're talking about talent, Think of how multifaceted 
that sort of concept is. When you're determining whether somebody's talented or not, you can look at that notion in a million different sorts of ways. And if that's the case, then, you know, I mean, under most decision-making circumstances, there are billions of ways that it could be. So it's very ambiguous as to whether something is going to um, be perceived in one way or another. Uh, and in terms of how we act, there's a million different ways of, of acting. So it's not an easy task uh, making these sorts of everyday decisions. It's clear that the world is complex and ambiguous. So we have to use shortcuts. I mean, it's not ideal. So we have to rely on um, easier ways of doing things, rules of thumb, heuristics is what they're called. And we're gonna talk about that later in the episode, but first, we're gonna start with a distinction that Daniel Kahneman makes um, in his book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. And we're gonna talk to him in this episode, but he makes a really nice distinction between uh, system one and system two. And he kind of talks about them as though they're, they're characters in his book. And system one is, uh, it's fast, uh, it's effortless, it's automatic. Um, system two is the opposite. It's slow, it's deliberative, and it's very effortful. And so this is a really nice distinction. We're gonna provide a bunch of examples of these because I think it really does a nice job at kind of characterizing the way that the mind works and the way that we're gonna be thinking about these everyday sorts of problems that we just mentioned.